Today we're talking about parenting during the pandemic. Check it out. Well, it's 2021. Parenting has never been an easy job, but especially during a pandemic, it is very challenging. And whatever the state of your family was before the pandemic, the pandemic came and it just exaggerated whatever was happening. So if there was problems inside, it exaggerated those problems. If there was good things happening, and then it kind of actually strengthened those things. But today we want to look at how can you live and have a happy family during pandemic. For you, what was the biggest like change and challenge? Of like, parenting here with the pandemic. I think first of all, having the kids home 24 hours a day, all of a sudden, all of us moms instantly became teachers. It wasn't like a choice to teach our children. We were just kind of <laughs> tossed into that. And then having them home, I mean, there's just totally a totally different dynamic to having your kids home all the time. I love summer breaks. I love breaks when my kids are home. But one thing that I always find so interesting when my kids are home is we eat lunch. Let's just pretend we eat at noon. They finished at 12.10. At 12.15, they will come and say, Mom, we're hungry. What's there to eat? I'm like, seriously? And this was months of this because everyone was stuck at home. And you're trying to balance healthy eating and healthy routines and school and tons of laundry because kids are home all the time and making messes and cleaning houses and husbands are home with work. I mean, it's just, it's just it was a lot to take in all at once, but we made it through. <laughs> <laughs> and there's still more of it here that we're working through now. I'd say one thing that probably really helped for us too was finding fun things to do together, like on purpose. So like uh, Beck and Anna like to play Catan, so play Catan with them. Or Josh and I, we like to play Mario Kart. Uh, even the whole family really gets into Mario Kart. And Uno. And Uno, making purposeful times with the family together. Yeah, I think establishing a healthy routine is very important because then you get used to that. It helps you manage your day a little more instead of just wondering, well, now what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna do now? Well, now it's time for this because we still had work to do. It wasn't like we were all just on vacation for months and the kids still had school. So they had their school time, then meal time and play time and study time. And we just had to figure out a routine that worked with us all being in the house at the same time. Aww. Sierra, we came to pick you up. Hey, I'm Sierra, this. how was school today? I'm very so Sierra. <laughs> Another thing that I think was very helpful is establishing healthy eating patterns. Because if I let my kids raid the fridge and feed themselves, oh, gosh. they would be eating cereal and chocolate and bread. My kids love bread. Oh, and white rice, plain rice, just rice. Sarah would ask it with it with a little shoyu, soy sauce. During this whole time, we started experimenting with healthier options like whole grain rice and more vegetables and more baked things, not fried, and just introducing them to new things like different soups and foods that are healthy but fun, but not just junk. <laughs> it's amazing, eating healthy helps you have the right type of energy. You don't go on these highs and lows, you know, sugar high, then you fall and you drop and you're cranky and then, you know, another one up and down, up and down. It's just kind of a more consistent and it would fill them up so that they're not begging for food every five minutes. <sighs> so a lot of people comment, you know, and they're like, oh, what a beautiful, wonderful family. You guys look perfect. So are we perfect? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> See my halo? <laughs> we definitely have had our moments, especially during the pandemic, has brought it out when you're with each other all the time. Yeah. And our, our house is much smaller than the house we had either in the States or in Brazil. So you're in each other's business all the time. What, how have we kind of dealt with that when somebody's got a little upset or one of the kids need to be alone or one of us needs to be alone? 
Well, at one point we said, well, the car's available. <laughs> if anyone needs just alone time, you can go sit in the car a little bit. And actually, I do that. <laughs> don't he I? does that every morning. He goes for I'll go get in the car and I'll go for a drive to a park I really like. And it's the perfect time to kind of like just stretch out a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of things that really helped me was having close friends that I could call up. I would call up my mom. I'd call up my sisters. I had other friends that I was texting and just getting advice and encouragement or just complaining a little to someone who understood what I was going through and having that support system really really is helpful not only during a pandemic but anytime because raising children is not something that we just know all the answers to you know <laughs> seeking advice from our parents and or our grandparents or older ladies we have a lot of wise ladies in our church that we can that i like to seek advice from i think it's very important to if you don't know what to do you don't know the answer to find someone who can help you and don't feel ashamed to open up about something that maybe you feel like is embarrassing or something because chances are somebody else is also struggling with the same thing wondering how to keep their kids in line or keep them entertained or or just to keep a happy family atmosphere uh, a healthy family atmosphere really does take work and you got to be intentional about it it just doesn't happen by accident one thing that we always do too is every evening we have family devotion time where we read um, the verse of the day from the Bible and we take turns praying, praying for people that are sick or for our family. And also we like to dance. I'm sure you've seen in previous videos. We do a lot of dancing in our house. You know, we turn on a good Christian upbeat song and the kids dance. It helps them get their energy out, but it also gives them positive energy because it's exciting and we're praising Jesus and it's something good that they can do. So it's amazing if you're depressed or sad or down, if you start dancing and have happy music on, it really does change the atmosphere. <laughs> we found things that really helped us day by day and still today, like I try not to let the girls play on the Switch or do any electronic games before they go to school. It seems like it puts them in a bad mood to want to leave for school. So before school, we turn on music or we can watch Bible stories online, but no gaming, no A lot of times they'll do phones. artistic things and that's when they'll start drawing things or Sarah makes all these origami things that are just amazing. It's yeah. just like, my goodness. What you making, Sarah? Sarah, Sarah, Bera. Sarah, Bera. What you making? Let's see. Making a dog. A dog? From origami? Yeah. How do you know how to do this? It's a teacher. The teacher at school? Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Because let me tell you what, turning on the TV and leaving that as your babysitter is a lot easier than me personally spending time with them and investing in them. But it's those times that they're gonna remember. When they grow up, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, my mom just let me watch TV whenever I wanted. Or are they gonna be like, oh yeah, my mom played games with me or she helped me, she taught me how to make a recipe or she taught me how to sew. Those are the things that are gonna be positive memories that we want them to then pass on to their children and grandchildren. So I like the little post-it note that you have on your computer. Do you yeah. want to share what it says? <laughs> I think it says, be the mom you want your kids to remember. It just goes along with I have to put reminders for me to <laughs> have a positive attitude. It's a work in, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Even with the, the healthy family, it starts with a healthy marriage too. And although I don't feel like our marriage is perfect yet, I do feel we have a lot of love and understanding and, and working with each other's strengths and weaknesses, <laughs> plenty of my own weaknesses. And how do we go about that? Well, we used to always look forward to when our parents would come either set because they would help watch the kids yes. and they could go out on yeah. dates because until now, well, Joshua just turned five, but before he was just too young to hardly leave with random people. This last year, you know, with all our families, 
not being able to come visit, it's been extra stressful. I mean, not stressful, but we haven't been able to really take time up away, just the two of us. So for those first months, we were all just stuck together in the house. What is going on? Mom put a tent out for us. Chilling in your tent. <laughs> so it's hard to just be Nate and I. And then as soon as schools went back, I went back to school. So I was studying in Shinjuku for five hours a day. And then we come home and have housework. So it was very hard for us to have just alone time. But you have to just, after the kids go to bed, watch something together or listen to something or try to hang out a little bit, except that come nine o'clock at night, <laughs> I'm not much good at anything. What would you say to somebody who is watching and like, wow, you know, that's great for you guys, but my family is a mess and I've screwed up. What, what about that person? Well, it's never too late to start trying and start investing in your family. If your marriage is in shambles, start there. Seek advice in what areas you can, you should improve on first. You know, with your children, if you don't hug them or you don't say that you love them, those are simple, small things that you can do that will make a huge difference in their life because kids need that affection, they need that love, they need that physical touch and I think that's very, very important. Keep an eye on who your kids' friends are because um, they will be highly influenced by their friends. We always tell the girls, because they go out and play with their friends, that we want them to influence their friends in positive ways and never have their friends influence them negatively. I think it's very important for us as parents, as mothers, to keep an eye on what friendships our kids are developing. In a future video, we wanna do questions and answers. So if you have any specific questions, maybe it's about parenting or families, or maybe it's something fun, like, hey, have you ever gone to this place or tried this or whatever it might be, feel free to post your questions down here. And then in a couple of weeks, we would like to respond to some of those. Is there anything else that you would add at all? But if they have any questions about our kids, for our kids, yeah. you know, if you would like to ask Becca, Anna, Sarah, or Joshua anything, please, Write it in the comments and then we'll do a video in the future and sit them down and see what their answers are to your questions. <laughs> could be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it could. <laughs> well, we're so thankful for each and every one of you that's been watching us and following us. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It really does help this channel grow and we appreciate you guys so much. And until next time, we'll see you on Life in Japan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.